Welcome back to the Jacob Media pregame show from Ocean Casino Resort. We're now going to go to Lincoln Financial Field for the Jacob Media NFL insider, John McMullen. John, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Doing fantastic and hopefully even better in a couple of hours when the Eagles hopefully improve to 7-0 on this season. I mean, we're all looking at it seemingly pretty confident in the Eagles' abilities today against the Pittsburgh Steelers. What's something you think the Eagles have to be very much aware of when facing a 2-5 and five opponent like the Steelers are? Well, I, I do think you have to be wary of the letdown. That was one of Nick Sirianni's messages to the team, and he brought up a couple other teams that had good starts, were 6-0, and 7-1 and in previous years, came out of a bye week, and they kind of laid an egg. I think you got to be careful because, you know, I come into this game, Mark, and I, I, I don't think I felt more confident about this game. I thought Detroit had a better chance to give the Eagles a game that turned out to be correct. In the season opener, I thought Jacksonville had a better chance. This Pittsburgh team, they are struggling. It's not just a rookie quarterback. I mean, T.J. Watt's not here. There was some hope that maybe he could get up to speed, have 15, 20 snaps. But uh, the, the, the Steelers have the bye week after this game for them. So it made sense to continue to rest him. He's not going to be available. They lose Chris Boswell. I mean, they had a great kicker. I, if I would have said... You know, coming in, maybe if they can keep it close, comes down to a big kick late. Well, they don't have Chris Boswell now. They got to bring in an undrafted kid from Wake Forest. So, um, not much going Pittsburgh's way on paper. And that might be the biggest scare tactic for the Eagles on this, you know, Halloween season because. Man, I mean, human nature. What do you got to What do you got to be frightened of with this Pittsburgh team? Hey, hey, John. When you look at this Pittsburgh team, and I agree with you 100 percent, that they're they're in an identity crisis right now, from from what I've been told. And you know, they don't run the ball well, they don't pass the ball well, and they've had a carousel of quarterbacks. Well, we know the young Kenny Pickett is going to start this game. He made a huge mistake in the Miami game last week that cost him the game. When you look at this Eagles defense, do you come after him all day to keep him as uncomfortable as possible? Well, we know the Eagles' philosophy, and, you know, they're not going to come blitzing from the buses if that's even with a rookie quarterback. Now, it, 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 if it's third and long situations, yeah, I think you'll probably see a little bit more pressure maybe than typically uh, because they think they can certainly rattle a young quarterback. He's certainly proven to be susceptible to turning the football over, so maybe um, there's a little bit more but you got to get in those situations. You got to be in obvious passing situations. You got to be second and long, third and long, and then maybe you see a little bit more blitzing than usual. John, you know, going into the the bye week, you know, Nick Sirianni had some, you know, had a quote where he talked about, you know, um, not really playing that complete game. Um, that's one of the things that kind of worried them, but it didn't worry him because it's good to be, you know, six and zero. Oh. Um, but he kind of talked about, you know, when they get a double-digit lead, they haven't really closed the deal um, because, you know, when they get to that point, they're really just trying to get to the end of the game, to transition and get through the end of the game. So he's aware of the fact that, you know, that they need to play a full three quarters. Um, I, listen, I, I, I believe that this game should be over by halftime. But then again, I've thought that about a couple of other other games that they played this year, and here you know, there we were in the fourth quarter, you know, holding our collective breaths. Not that we believe that they could lose, but you know, the the opportunity was there. Um, what type of changes can they have made on both sides of the ball uh, to put them in a better situation where they can dominate from start to finish? I get the first quarter is all about feeling out. But by the time you get to the second, third, and fourth quarter, you should know exactly what you want to do on, bo on both sides of the ball. Yeah, I mean, it, it's one of their things when they did their self-scout self set. They want to get better. They want to play a more complete game. I don't know if anybody can play 60 minutes. You can talk about that. In a perfect level, everybody's chasing it. But you can't be perfect. Um, but they want to get better, and they want to be able to – um, make sure they don't have those, um, I, I don't even want to call them heart-stopping moments, but have teams in the game late if they don't have to. They want to be able uh, to, to finish games a little bit better. Um, we talked about the tackling on the defensive side of the football as well. That's got to be tightened up. Um, the special teams, 
there's a couple other things they wanted to work in on coming in as, out of the sub scout that people don't necessarily think about like Dallas Goddard they want to get him more involved on third downs because they think he's such an effective player there so there's a number of things that came out of the bye week and that was certainly one of them playing a more complete game when people say 60 minutes I go is that really possible I mean this is the NFL uh, everybody's got good players even I just talked about a Pittsburgh and what a difficult season they have. They still have Najee Harris. They still have Cam Hayward. They still have Minka Fitzpatrick, Chase Claypool, Deontay Johnson. They still have a bunch of good players, and that's every NFL team. So, Sean, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. Sure. Go ahead, Seth. Uh, see, my my thing is, you know, when I read a quote like that, it it kind of speaks to mindset. I I get it. You know, those other guys on the other side, they're professionals too. Uh, and it is hard to go out and play a 60-minute game in totality when you really think about the fact that you have, um, you know, the offense is on the field, then the defense is on the field, then the special teams is on the field. Every time you go out, there's a refocusing that has to almost transpire. But when I think about why they haven't been able to, you know, play that p complete game, I believe it's mindset. When you – when you – Take your foot off the off the pedal from an offensive perspective. Um, you know, listen, teams like Buffalo play complete games, especially the more they move into, you know, the second half. The Kansas City Chiefs play a complete game because they don't ever stop trying to score points every single possession. And it doesn't, doesn't matter whether they're running the football or whether they're throwing the football. On the defensive side of the ball, they don't ever stop applying pressure. But when I read that quote, it spoke the mindset to me because Nick was like, okay, we just want to get to the end of the game. We, you know, we got a double-digit lead. We want to get to the end of the game. And my problem with that is, you know, because you're taking a passive mindset, you're giving that passive mindset to your team. So when you take your foot off the gas as a coach, as a play caller, then that gives the players the idea that you're taking your foot off the gas pedal and they, in turn, take their foot off the gas pedal. But if you stay aggressive at all times, you know, until you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that that team can't come back, then there's no ambiguity in what's going on on the field and what's being called from the sideline. Yeah, I don't know if it's that as much as that as, as when Nick was talking about that, he was talking about more of the, the natural sort of inclination of, of if there's no sense of urgency, guys are going to uh, human nature more than anything else. You know, Nick thought the Minnesota game, he choked the put off the gas. Um, and he admitted uh, that was my fault. That was his mistake. And then the Washington game, a lot of people said, all right, he took the foot off the gas. It was actually the exact opposite. He kept trying to throw the football deep down the field. He, he tried to overcorrect, overcorrect. So he as a coach is trying to figure out the right way and trying to get better. But when you, when you try to live up to the standard of Buffalo or Kansas City offensively, all right, Look, they're not as explosive as Buffalo or Kansas City. But there is there are a lot of things the Eagles do better than Buffalo or Kansas City. They're just a different team. And they've dominated in every bit away as those two teams. If you look at point differential, all right, Buffalo's number one. Number two, though, is the Eagles. They're beating teams by over 10 points a game. So, in theory, if you go by that, the most dominant team is Buffalo. But number two is the Eagles. So it's a pretty good standard either way. Mm -hmm. And, John, they certainly set a good standard so far this season with being able to get after the quarterback. 17 sacks, eighth highest total in the league, and the Eagles, of course, have already taken their bye. They add Robert Quinn to the mix. What can Eagles fans expect today from Robert Quinn? How much is he going to play? How much will you see him on the field? Uh, he's going to play from all indications. Um you know, I would say 15 to 20 snaps would be the ceiling. Um, and we'll see how it shakes out. The more third and longs they're in, as I mentioned before, the more apt you are to see a Robert Quinn type. He is a pass rusher. It's going to be interesting to see how he fits in because 
I don't know if a lot of people realize, but nobody was doubled more than Robert Quinn in Chicago because the Bears have nothing else on the defensive line. So maybe that explains his ineffectiveness in Chicago. I don't know, but I do know he's not going to see many double teams in Philadelphia. So it's going to be interesting to see if Robert Quinn can help the Eagles, and it'll start today because uh, he's a veteran player. They're going to get him out there. Hey, John, the uh, trade uh, deadline is rapidly approaching. There's been rumors out there the Eagles might have some interest in Kareem Hunt. Um, would you pursue a Kareem Hunt? Do, do you think the Eagles need to have an addition like that or make any other additions for that matter? I, I think their biggest need at this point, D-Gun, is a third safety. I agree. I think we kind of saw when uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson left the Dallas game, I think it was for 16 reps, there was a significant uh, uh, downtick to Kayvon Wallace. Um, could they use a running back? Yes. Um, I get the feeling Howie Roseman would like a running back more than then Nick Sirianni, Nick likes Miles Sanders a lot. Um, but I think you need two. And I don't think Kenny Gainwell is taking that step forward. I don't think Boston Scott is that guy. So I, I do think Howie would like to add a running back. Um, he's not giving us first-round pick back to New Orleans for Alvin Kamara. That's the silliest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. But And remember, one concern is this team has already traded – uh, their mid-round picks in next year's draft. So it becomes more difficult when, when you know, if it's a conditional four for Kareem Hunt, you might have to pop it up to a three. Would the Eagles like the player? I think the Eagles would like the player. Can they get it done? That's that's a different uh, part of the question. John, so we, you watch, we've all watched the Eagles play through six games. Um, we've seen the highs, we've seen the lows. Um, put your coaching hat on for a second and go into this offseason based upon what you've seen over the first six games on both sides of the ball and on special teams and give me one thing in each phase of the game that you would like to see changed to help this team go to another level. Uh, defensively, for me, it's easy. I want them to tighten up on the tackling, as I mentioned a little bit before. I think they're a little bit too undersized, Seth. I think nobody cares about the running game until they care about the running game, I always say. So, you know, if we get to January, there's a bad weather game somewhere. You need to stop the run. It might even be Derrick Henry with Tennessee coming in here. Very undersized defense with Hassan Reddick up front, Kaiser White, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. And they've missed 57 tackles. I think they have to pay a little bit more attention we all know the modern game's about stopping the pass. The Eagles believe that. I agree with them to a certain extent, but I think they've gone too far with that. So that would be my defensive take. Offensively, um, they've been really good offensively. And I, 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 you know, I always say this is not a run first team. It's not a pass first team. It's a Jalen Hurts first team. Um, they build the offense around what Jalen Hurts does well. I think they've done a very good job with it. If there's one nitpick, I would say they need to be a little bit more explosive in 12 personnel when they play those two tight ends. So it would be nice to have that second tight end who can stress the defense like Dallas Goddard can. Tyreek Jackson might be on his way back. Maybe he's that guy. Um, but Jack Stoll certainly is not. And then special teams – there's plenty of, of criticisms there. But the biggest one is you need a returner. I, I mean, at some point, it's not as important. We know how many touchbacks there are on kick returns. The punters are so good. There's less punt returns than ever. But when you have an opportunity, you need to be able to return punts. And I see, you know, they're playing the London game now. Christian Kirk is returning punts. I saw Miami play. Tyreek Hill is returning punts. Devontae Smith should be returning punts for this team, at least when they have an opportunity to get a return. Understood. John, before we let you go, what is your prediction for Eagles-Steelers today? Uh, I think the Eagles win it relatively easy, 31-16-ish. <laughs> Ish. 
I like that. I like that. John McMullen, Jacob Media, NFL Insider, joining us from Lincoln Financial Field. John, thanks so much. Hey, thanks, guys. Absolutely. I like that. Ish. Ish. 16 ish. 16 ish. Good ish. enough. As if you can get um, a quarter or half or three quarters. They'll return. Ish. What, what, what can you do? You can, you, you can return, what, a failed two point conversion and try to get some points that way, maybe? All right, we'll be back with our predictions and our final thoughts on this matchup where the Eagles are trying to improve to 49 and 29 against the Steelers all time. We'll be back with the Jacob Media pregame show for Motion Casino Resort in a minute. Hi, everybody.